Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, here once again is in my sister's basement. That's right, we've moved out of our home, we've sold it, and so temporarily I am uh, taking up space in my sister's basement. She even graffitied the wall, that wasn't me. <laughs> All right, so in this video, uh, we're gonna make a shop-built speed reducer for the ShopSmith Mark V. Now, why would you want a speed reducer? The low end speed of your Mark V, if you have the mechanical version, the, the one that was introduced in the 1950s and in production until, what, 10 years ago, um, your low end is 700 RPM. And that's fine for most woodworking operations. But when you're running the jigsaw, the bandsaw, the scroll saw, you may want to go slower. Cutting plastic, cutting metal, things like that may need a slower speed. Now, ShopSmith addressed this in a couple ways. One, they do make a stand that you can have dedicated pulleys and belts that would run your tools at a slower speed. Uh, they also have a speed reducer. This is cast part that attaches to your machine, and you can use it on the lathe, you can use it in the drill press, and you can use it to lower the speed for running accessories. And then finally, they introduced a electronic variable speed head, headstock called the Power Pro. And uh, that goes down, uh, was it 250 RPM? So super, super slow. But if you happen to have one of the older mechanical style Mark Vs, a gentleman back in the 1960s, in fact, 1960, <laughs> came up with this idea for making a jack shaft. This is just a simple device that uses several pulleys and a couple belts to run accessories at a slower speed. So in this video, we're gonna tackle that. I'm gonna make uh, just a couple of little variations on his design, and I'll walk you through my thinking. We'll do our follow-up uh, midweek video stump Q&A to answer your questions, comments, and cheap shots. So let's take a look at what happens here with the speed reducer and exactly how we're going to accomplish it. Now, I know to some people that the idea of messing around with belts and pulleys is confusing. I get that. I'm going to share a link in the video description to a great website that will walk you through some of the basics, and uh, it was very helpful for me. But basically what's happening here is we have our 700 RPM spindle, and I want this spindle on the jigsaw to run slower. So what I can do is I can take a small pulley. It really doesn't even matter what diameter it is, as long as the shaft will fit on the 5 8 arbor here on the headstock. So we'll, we'll take that off. It's a drive hub. And I'll slide that on. And this happens to be a two inch diameter pulley. All right, so this is a two inch pulley. If I take a larger diameter pulley, it really doesn't matter how much larger it is. If it's larger and it's driven by this one, this will go slower. So imagine this two inch pulley driving a four inch pulley. This would be half the speed down here, this spindle. Now, imagine that that is on a shaft. In fact, let's just put it on a shaft. We won't have to imagine it. So here's a five eighths inch shaft. Let's lock that set screw down. And then now imagine a smaller pulley on the opposite end. All right, so we now have a belt driving the large pulley from the small pulley. So this is going now half the speed. If this is a two inch and this is a four inch, if this is going 700, this is now going 350 RPMs. The small one is turning 350 RPMs. Now, if I take the exact same size pulley as my large one on this shaft and mount that over here on my jigsaw, I have the speed yet again. Now, here's something interesting about this. This is a half inch shaft on the Shopsmith jigsaw. The Shopsmith bandsaw, the scroll saw have a five eighths inch. All of the rest of these are five eighths, but this one is, uh, is unique, it's a troublemaker. And we'll just attach that. Okay, so as long as we orient this the, the same way, the exact same size pulley that runs here is the same size pulley that will fit here. Now we can put this 
shaft off to the side, we could drop it down below. But again, what we would, do, would want to do is to make sure that these pulleys align with each other and these two pulleys align with each other. Now, something's got to hold this and support this as that spins. And so we're going to use these bearings that are called pillow blocks. And the pillow blocks will fit onto that shaft. And then these pillow blocks themselves will be bolted onto a piece of wood. So there you're up to speed uh, or down to speed, depending upon how you want to look at it. Uh, I'm going to begin doing some experimenting now. So here's where I wound up. Now, this isn't exactly what I had in mind when I started. So let's talk about what I did differently from the original plans and what I would do differently if I could. So let's take a look at what's happening. Um, I've got a U-bolt here that is grasping the, uh, the outfeed side of the way tube. And that's providing me tension. You can see there's a, a gap right now between the way tube and this piece of plywood. I've got two pillow blocks that are supporting the axle. The axle is 5 8 inch steel. I got a two inch pulley on this end and a four and a half inch diameter pulley over here. Also a four and a half inch here and a two inch here. On the front end, I also have a U-bolt in the center. But in addition to that, I've made a couple little wooden blocks that are straddling the way tubes and providing me a little bit of a buffer from the end of the machine and also to make sure that I don't push the headstock all the way against this. Now the lower drive shaft is just spinning away there and potentially could come into contact with that pulley. So it's important to remove the drive hub that would normally be in place for powering your high speed devices like your jointer and your scroll saw. Now, just as a side note, there are some people who don't have this hub on your machine. I would suggest you get one because it acts as a heat sink to draw heat away from that idler shaft uh, and keeps those bearings nice and cool, at least as cool as possible. Here's the website we're going to go to, bricklayer.com. I'll link to this exact link in the video description. But you can see here that if I know the sizes of my pulleys, in my case, my largest pulley is four and a half inches in diameter. Um, you might try different sizes depending upon what's available to you. My smallest pulley is two inches in diameter, and I've got about five and a half inches between centers. I also know that my speed of my headstock is 700 RPM at the low end, and that is the size of the small pulley. So if I calculate this, It'll tell me that I need a belt that's 21 and a half inches long. It tells me that my large pulley will be turning 311.1 RPMs. If you want to, you can even animate this. Isn't that exciting? So basically for every rotation I get here, I get a little less than half a rotation here. Now let's take this number 311 and put that in here. So this is my second set of pulleys, my uh, small pulley, which is on the bottom on the, uh, the accessory side, is going to be running 311 RPMs, actually 311.1. Oh, it'll let me do points. All right, we'll just go 311. And we calculate that. And that now tells me my large pulley, the pulley on my bandsaw or on my jigsaw, will now be turning 138 Point two RPM. Beginning on the headstock with 700, I now have 137.2. And that's like 
So not just my uh, jigsaw, I can also run my bandsaw over here, and that'll get us way down to where we can cut metal and plastic with no problem. So let's talk about some things that I did differently and maybe some things that I might do differently. The first one is, right off the bat, I, I, I abandoned the idea of having this mounted underneath the bench tubes, the lower tubes, as you see it here. The one advantage of doing that is um, when you're not using it, all you have to do is pull the belts off the pulleys and that'll just dangle free from the tubes. The problem with that is if you have any kind of storage underneath your Mark V, that's going to be in the way. Okay, well, then how about mounting this in the same way, but underneath between the bench tubes and the way tubes? I think that's a great idea. It would work just fine. You could build it exactly the same way using a wooden wedge to put friction on the belt or to put tension on the belt. The downside of that is uh, you now have to buy longer belts. Um, I don't really see much more of a downside to having it mounted here. Uh, in fact, I was going to do that, but things, uh, things didn't go my way. It turned out I needed much more belt than I purchased. So going with four feet, I'm able to accomplish this, having this mounted on top. It did require uh, that I go with the U-bolts to apply the tension here. And you can see I could add more tension if I needed to, but uh, there's just no need. That's, uh, that's all the tension that seems to be necessary to keep everything from slipping. To remove this, uh, you can take the tension off. In fact, I have to remove the U-bolt completely anyway. And we'll be removing the U-bolt from the front side as well. But taking the tension off, you just roll the belt off of the large pulley. And that belt is now free. Um, over here, normally I would roll it off of the large pulley first, but it's easy enough to just pull it off of there. And if we pull our headstock away, that pulley is free as well. Let's take off the U-bolt, and I'll show you a little, a little feature that probably wasn't necessary for the way this wound up. My original plan, as I mentioned, was to have all of this mounted here. And I want you to know, or note, I've got magnets there <laughs> holding on to my tubes. So a few dimensions that might be helpful. This board is seven inches wide. I've got two three quarter inch pieces of, of plywood that I've attached and have cut to fit over the way tubes. Um, on this side, because of the, uh, the, the four and a half inch pulley, I had to cut a little bit of this away here um, could have designed it that way. I just, you know, I did it on the fly. Uh, you can see that I've got T-nuts here that my uh, bearings, my blocks are mounted to. And uh, otherwise, I just have glue and screws holding these blocks in place. My magnets, I ran a couple flathead screws into the wood to position them. And then they are on double-sided double tape. And that should be good enough to hold that. But again, magnets turned out to be unnecessary. And those blocks allow me to position that just right and uh, allow me to pivot. So in the video description, I have included a link to this original article from 1960. I'll include some links to some resources. If you decide to build one of these yourself, you can either click on through and buy them on Amazon or just use that to do your shopping at your local hardware store. I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots in our midweek follow-up stump Q&A. And as always, channel members, you're awesome. All right. Make it a great week.